Artemis 1 is set to blast off Monday morning from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The uncrewed flight is expected to last six weeks. If all goes well, NASA astronauts could take a lap around the moon as soon as 2024 with the ultimate goal of landing two people on the surface by 2025. So for more on the mission, we want to bring in Mark Kirusich. He's uh, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for the Artemis Campaign Development, and he's at the Kennedy Space Center right now. Very good to see you this morning. You must be pretty excited. Good morning. Excited, electrified, stoked. Yes, it's really great to be here on the eve of the Artemis One launch. So what are the biggest challenges facing the crew at the Kennedy Space Center on launch day? And, and what would be a successful mission? Yeah. Well, first of all, a lot of the, of the heavy lifting to get the spacecraft and the rocket to the launch pad is behind us. It's a little bit of a calm right now. We're doing the final preps, the final closeouts, loading consumables, watching the weather, making sure the weather is good. And then, and then on Monday, it'll be the very first time this team is launching this, this rocket. So we'll be doing things for the first time and, and being extra careful as we do it. Um, so I know there's gonna be a lot of comparisons between Apollo and this uh, mission. And you know, it was a very different time when Apollo launched, there was a lot of pressure to get it done and, and beat the beat, you know, Russia at, at this game, this space race. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between this mission and the Apollo mission? Sure, and you hit on some of it. But we first of all, Apollo was amazing that they were able to pull this off in the time they did with the techn technology they had available. We're doing this and we've learned from them. We're building on what they built. We, we've had the advantage of 50 years of progress in computers, in navigation, in life support systems, and we've incorporated all that into our rocket and our spacecraft, making it more reliable. And finally, there's the motivation. As you pointed mm -hmm. out, the first time we did this, we were in the space race with another company, country, and the objective was to get a person there and people back. This time we're going to stay. We have a very ambitious science agenda. We have technology demonstrations plan, and most importantly, we'll be demonstrating systems and learning how to pre prepare people for even more ambitious missions to go back to Mars, to go to Mars for the first time. You know, I think I heard an interesting stat that was something like, you know, more than half of the, of the world's population had not been born when Apollo landed on the moon. It, what took us so long to go back there? How come uh, this is when we're going back? Well, I um, first of all, I have to say, I was one of the people who was around back then, and it was <laughs> 1969. I watched that first time Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon from my living room, and that's what motivated me to come here and work for NASA. You know, we've done a lot of great things in space and human space flight since then. We learned, we put a space station, which we've operated continuously, crewed for over 20 years now. So we've done a lot of interesting things to build up to this moment finally to return to the moon and go on to further further places for longer periods of time. I'm looking forward to what the future holds, Mark Kurasic, but I'm also looking forward to Monday. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, thanks for your time this morning. Well, on Monday, we will be bringing you special coverage all day of the launch. You can watch that on Paramount Plus or on the free CBS News app.